Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to give you the signs that I wish I had 15 years ago when I was practicing my meditation practice in order to access deeper states. Because in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the five signs that you are entering into an advanced meditative state, as well as give you a skill set to recognize and use them to progress further in your meditation practice. We'll be talking about different meditation stages to include access, concentration, and genre stages one and two. And at the end of this video, I want you to be able to reliably access these states yourself. Now I've been meditating and using brain measurement technologies for over 15 years, both personally as well as professionally as a US Navy trained psychiatrist and as a human mental performance coach. Now what's fascinating is that we can now correlate these internal transitions with how you feel as you're meditating with actual brain data to reflect these biological changes changes that are happening in your brain. And today we'll be talking about access concentration, which is a tool in your toolbox to use in order to access advanced meditative states called jhana. Lee Brazenton's book here, Right Concentration, does a deep dive, so we'll be covering a lot of the concepts that you can find in that book. Let's take a few seconds to talk about access concentration and how it feels for me so that you can recognize this pulling sensation that will get you to the deeper and more advanced meditative states. I remember the first time I started to feel this pulling sensation on my focus and concentration during meditation, and then when I learned how to work with it, I was much more reliably able to access very deep and profound states of meditation that completely changed my mental and physical state. Now, as you are generating access concentration, my description of it is that you feel that your consciousness is being pulled into a black hole of time and space. As you harness your attention into a single point, you notice a pull. In my opinion, that pull is a deformation in time and space that's pulling your consciousness in. Lee Brasington refers to this as access concentration, which in the Buddhist tradition is a gateway to the jhana states. Now, most people begin meditation with mindfulness on the breath. You're sitting there watching your breath. If your mind wanders, you gently bring it back. Now, this is an excellent foundation to start with, but it lacks a sense of depth that keeps people coming back to meditation year after year. I saw all too much in my medical school training where people without really a whole lot of experience were training others to practice mindfulness meditation, but neither the teacher nor the student really practiced it with much regularity or had much depth or experience with altered states when it comes to meditative experiences. See, the problem is that you need to train every day with mindfulness meditation for a year before you really start generating this pull sensation that you can use to get to more advanced states. The good news is that I believe if you use certain neurofeedback technologies like the Muse headband, you can accelerate your progress down to a couple of months of work before you really start feeling that pulling sensation. And with the information in this video, you should be able to utilize that pulling sensation in a more confident way to generate altered states. Because when you use neurofeedback technologies like the Muse headband, they force you to keep practicing mindfulness meditation for at least 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the time that it's been set, but also to accelerate your recognizing when your mind has wandered, bring it back to the breath, and generate the access concentration more reliably. Now back around 2018, when I was using the Muse headband every day, I noticed that my attention started to get noticeably sharper. And that's when I began to experience this pulling sensation more consistently. It really feels like there's this deformation in space time and your attention gets drawn inwards. Now, it felt incredible, but the Muse neurofeedback actually didn't like it. As I got pulled further and further into the black hole-like sensation, I got a lot of negative feedback on the Muse headband, even though it felt incredible. I tried different calibrations, I stacked different techniques and protocols and workarounds, but nothing really helped. And it wasn't until later, after reviewing brain data from expert meditators, and eventually my own once I generated this skill set, that I really understood what was happening. You see, the Muse headband and most neurofeedback technologies heavily reward alpha brainwave activity, which goes up as you practice mindfulness attention. Now that's great because alpha is the precursor to access concentration. But as you move deeper into these concentration states, other brainwaves like beta and gamma tend to increase and dominate, and these current devices just are not optimized to track that transition yet. Most people using these devices will be practicing mindfulness meditation and increasing their level 
levels of alpha, which is great. That's the general population. But as you get more advanced, you're probably going to be generating more and more beta and gamma and cause neural feedback technologies to go a little haywire. Now, my hope is that future AI driven algorithms will be able to map these transitions more accurately. But until then, the strategy here is to use the Muse headband for about 10 minutes to practice basic mindfulness, which even if you're an advanced meditator will help you have a better session overall. It really is like putting money in the bank for those 10 minutes so that when you have all your attention circuitry in your brain turned on and focusing on your breath, you can then take off the Muse headband and generate access concentration at will and enter these more advanced meditative states. If you don't have a neural feedback device, that's fine. Just set a timer for 10 minutes to focus on your breath and do your best to maintain your attention on your breath and then practice generating more access concentration to go into jhana state one. Now, as you have your attention on the breath, you will notice different things. First of all, that pulling sensation. As your concentration gets pulled into a single point in space in front of you, for me, it tends to be right around here in the front of my face, your breathing will change. That'll be the first sign that you're starting to generate access concentration. When I first experienced this attentional pull, I thought I was doing something wrong because I had read a lot about breath work and I thought that during meditation, you were supposed to be really relaxed and have steady, even breathing. So I got concerned when my breath got really shallow and more rapid as I was getting more and more concentrated on this point in front of me. But I was relieved to learn that within the Buddhist tradition, this is actually quite normal and a sign that you are starting to generate access concentration. Because as your attention intensifies, breathing naturally changes. It starts to get shallow and more rapid. You might even forget to breathe for a minute or two as you're getting pulled into that access concentration. And that's where in the brain maps, you start to see more and more beta and gamma start to be generated. Now, the second sign that you are starting to generate access concentration will be muscle contractions. These are things that start to happen subconsciously as you're getting drawn into a single point. For me, one of the things that actually happens as I start to enter this state is that the muscles behind my ears contract for whatever reason. I just noticed that my face kind of comes back and I get this tension in the back of my head that pulls my ears back. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I know that as I'm generating access concentration, that tends to be what my muscles want to do. Now we'll talk about some other muscular contractions that will happen in jhana state one, but in access concentration, it's more like my face wants to pull back. Now I have to be careful with that when I'm measuring my brain waves because any muscle contractions will contain contaminate the signal. So I have learned over time not to contract my facial muscles, but the impulse is still there. And then the third sign is the arising of PD. After I've generated mindfulness awareness and I collapse my attention into a single point of space in front of me, in my mind's eye, my breathing quickens, my facial muscles contract, and I start to experience a tingly excitement or intensity, even bordering on mild nausea. This is the arising of PD. It's these energetic sensations that act as the gateway into first jhana. Now, if you wanna hear about how to utilize and control these PD to get you into a totally altered state, and you've enjoyed the content so far, be sure to hit subscribe so that you don't miss future videos where I do a deep dive on meditation techniques like this. We know that half of you watching haven't subscribed yet, so please hit that subscribe button so that I can continue to bring you more cutting edge information on this topic. And as promised, how do you utilize that PD energy that starts to come up as you get pulled into access concentration? Well, it's shifting the meditation object. During the mindfulness meditation with the Muse headband, you had your attention on the breath. But as these energetic sensations start to build up, you actually switch your attention from the breath to those tingly sensations or a rush of energy or that pulling sensation into the deformation in 3D space in front of you. You can feel it pulling you in. And that's where most people get stuck in that transition because you do need to practice, first of all, recognizing what these phenomena feel like and actually being able to hold onto them with your mind, but then also maintaining your attention on them so they build up in a feedback loop. Think of a microphone that emits a little bit of noise, but then it gets fed back through the amplifier and it gets louder and louder. That's what it's like. You are using these energetic sensations and when you bring your attention to them, they feel nice. They bring you a little bit of joy, they, they, a little bit of stimulation. And because you enjoy it, 
it builds your enjoyment and it builds up and up and up. They describe this rising of PD as joy and rapture and that's really what takes you up into the first jhana state. It is like putting your hands on a, an electrical wire and getting shocked. Now a lot of this has happening internally and it's definitely a different sensation than actually getting shocked by an outlet for example, it, but it's a very noticeable state change. And you use the PD as an anchor. Now the first couple of times you encounter this in even later in my meditative practice, this still happens, is that you try to transition your attention from the breath to the PD too quickly, and the PD are not strong enough yet to maintain enough stimuli to maintain your attention on them, meaning that they're weak so that you get distracted, they don't create that feedback loop, and if that happens, just go back to the breath and generate more access concentration so that you feel them getting stronger and stronger, and then transition to them fully as the meditation object. So a simple progression would look like this. Do mindfulness on the breath for about 10 minutes with or without the Muse headband. Allow that sensation of your attention getting pulled into the 3D deformation space, and as you get pulled in, notice the sensations that you can feel on your skin and in your body. Generate that PD, that sense of excitement that, whoa, I'm really on the edge of the current moment here. Wow, I'm really present. Start to generate more joy. And as this joy and rapture builds, you get additional muscle contractions. My spine will straighten straight up. Might even get a little bit of rocking sensation as I'm sitting there. I'm sure if there was an outside observer, they would think I was nuts for... <laughs> rocking back and forth and having all these weird movements in my neck. I try not to let it get too out of hand, but it is happening a lot for me right now. They talk about this concept of releasing kundalini energy, and I think that that's what's going on. Each and every day you pick up a little bit of conflict, a little bit of stress from work, from friends, from family, and some of that needs to work its way out when you're experiencing these meditation states. And at some point you'll stop the impulse to be rocking back and forth and you'll be locked in position and boom, that's when you really are present. You are feeling this rush of energy. It is almost too much. It actually feels like you can't sustain this for longer than five minutes just because of how stimulating it is. And that's the fifth sign is that you have so much stimulus coming in from this point of focus, just complete awareness and the PD rushing through your body that the there's no need to even be concerned about distraction. I mean, if I got distracted about what I wanted to have for dinner that night, it wouldn't even happen because I, I don't care right now. There's so much going on, so much stimulus filling up my central nervous system that I'm just completely present and in awe of like what's happening. And this can be to various degrees. It doesn't have to be all awe-inspiring, but you should notice a very significant state change and a feeling of joy that feels very pleasurable. And they say, don't stay in this state for the entire meditation session if you're meditating for 30 to 45 minutes. You actually only want to sustain that for a couple of minutes because it is overstimulating and people get stuck in that state and become sort of joy junkies as they call them. But that's not the point of meditation. The point of meditation is not to just be in a state of joy and rapture for hours on end. Within these traditions, the goal is actually to get a profound state change in your mind and in your brain so that you can reach insights towards the nature of reality and yourself that you wouldn't have otherwise. So after a few minutes in this state, you actually are able to downshift, and I've been able to show this in brain scans. In the first stage, jhana, you have a huge uptick in high beta and gamma brain waves. And in that state, you are using the PD, joy, rapture, stimulation as the main meditation object. It's a certain feeling that has a sharp feeling to it and very energizing feeling to it. Two, downshifting into happiness and contentment, otherwise known as sukha. And you can feel it often that there's an element of sukha that's with the PD on the rise up to jhana state one, but after you've been there a little while, you can downshift a little bit. You can shift down into sukha. It's a feeling of happiness and contentment. It's not so stimulating. And it's a state that feels much more relaxing, but also very present that you can sustain for much longer periods of time than that overstimulating jhana state one. And in my meditative practice right now, often I'll just stop at jhana stage two. That's where I feel most comfortable and I can sit there for about 30 more minutes and, and feel very present and get a lot of nourishment from that. It just puts me in a great mood and I feel grounded. And I feel like I've done the work for the day already in training my brain to really harness amazing power. Now I have been practicing jhana stage three and four, which are more difficult. They have to do with letting go of 
meditation objects all together and sort of dissolving into infinite space, which is difficult to do because my ego tries to keep holding on to its reality. But in general, if I've gotten a good amount of jhana stage two in the morning during my meditation session, I feel that it makes you so much more equipped to handle the day. Someone asked me off of YouTube even recently, like, why do we even practice meditation? What's the point of all this? And in my mind, from a really practical standpoint, I think that generating these mental states early in the morning allows you to get into a certain resonant frequency for the day that makes you so much more capable. It helps you make good decisions. It helps you show up fully for work your clients, your family, because we know that the state that you are in helps your brain operate from that standpoint. If you're sick and not feeling well, you're going to have all your memories flood about other times you've not felt well, you're not going to take care of opportunities, and you're not going to perform at your fullest. But by practicing these meditation techniques every morning and just feeling great, it puts you in a mental headspace where you make good decisions and you're open to opportunities and feedback that make you better and better. Now, if you're interested in harnessing this practice and incorporating it into your daily life, we have a five-day challenge where we teach this. There's a workbook that goes along with it. I'll drop a link below in the description if you're curious. But if you wanna learn more about how I actually measure these states with EEG technology, take a look at this video and I'll see you on the other side.